With RuneScape's open world economy, making money is necessary to fuel your gameplay from day one. However, not all money making methods are created equal. In this video, I want to cover five early game money makers that should be accessible to most players within a week or two of starting RuneScape. Before we talk about the individual methods, I wanted to help you get your mindset straight so that your journey will be more fruitful. While the GP per hour is the most important metric that we're going to be looking at today, you do want to look at the total utility that a method brings. Early on in your grind on RuneScape, levels are going to be the single most important thing. While money making is important, it is going to be secondary to skills. The reason that I'm telling you to hold off on making your primary focus money making is that as you grow your account, the amount of money that you can make per hour greatly increases with top money makers in old school RuneScape breaching 20 mil right now. For this reason, the best money makers will help you advance your account while earning you GP. Bonds in theory are a great addition to old school RuneScape. They help kids not have to beg their parents for membership like I did. And they allow the gullible to spend their paychecks on Tebos and give them away to scammers at the Grand Exchange. However, as a new player, you are not going to be making enough GP per hour to sustain your membership using Bonds. I know people, real actual living human people, who would cut magic trees for 100k GP per hour in order to buy Bonds so that they could sustain their membership so that they could cut more magic trees. At this point, the game is really not worth playing. It's like having a job that costs so much to get to that all the money that you're making at the job just goes towards getting you to that job again. What I'm trying to say here is don't treat this game like a part-time job, play it to have fun, and just buy your membership with a credit card. All right, our first money maker for today is buying bonds with your credit card. Just kidding, we're gonna be buying items from shops and then selling them on the Grand Exchange. There are no requirements other than having some starting coins, but certain shops will have specific requirements. A few disclaimers, there are so many shops that this works with, so I'm not gonna be able to cover them all. I'm just gonna be able to cover uh, a couple of my favorites here. And I do understand that this doesn't train any skills and I had that little bit earlier about that, but this is a really good way to just make some quick cash when you're just starting off. The first shop that I'm going to cover is the Sawmill and it is accessible to all players which is fantastic. What we are going to be buying here are the nails. All of the nails are profitable but steel and iron are going to be more profitable than the bronze nails but it is technically worth buying all of them. These are great because they all stack in your inventory so basically what you are going to do is you are going to buy the nails then you are going to hop worlds, buy the nails, hop worlds, buy the nails, rinse and repeat, and then once you're done, we will be selling them on the Grand Exchange. One Runelite plugin that you absolutely do need is the menu entry swapper. What you're going to need to turn on is under UI swaps. You're gonna come down here and you're going to go to shop by shift click and switch this on to 50. This means that when you're in the shop, all you have to do is hold down the shift button and click on the item and it will automatically buy 50 of them. Time to do a quick test. I'm going to do 20k GP, see how long that takes and see how much money we make. Here's the goods and this took me 4 minutes and 45 seconds. I insta sold everything just to get this over with quicker, but we ended up with a little bit over 62k. If we take that 62k and subtract our initial 20, we are left with 42.7 thousand GP. Multiply that out and we get 540k per hour. Pretty insane GP to be able to make on a level three. I do want to add one little bit about this. You are going to cycle through all the worlds faster than they can respawn with more nails. So you're probably not going to be able to do this for a full hour. But if you are brand new and you need some quick GP, this is a great way to get it. Next up, we're going to be buying monkey nuts. Monkey nuts are actually one of the best shopscape methods coming in at almost 1 mil GP per hour. They're not super useful or anything, but they do hold their value due to people hoarding them for collections in game. Requirements are a little bit higher with this one, requiring Monkey Madness 1. If you don't have Monkey Madness 2 completed, you will need to have a Grigri equipped. And while not necessary, I do recommend you bring in graceful and stamina potions. This hut right here is where we will be banking, marked by the bank symbol on our minimap. And then to get to the food store, we are just going to run right over here. And then we will be trading with this NPC, Solahib. Then with our menu entry swapper, just like before, you should be able to one click buy your full inventory of monkey nuts, run back over to the bank, deposit them all. In your bank, you are going to want to have your default quantity setting here at the bottom set to all. That way you can one click deposit all of your monkey nuts. The wiki has buying monkey nuts at 972k per hour. This does not account for the GE tax, which is going to eat about 100k of that. 
and then you're probably not going to be able to buy as many as they say you can buy. So I'd put this somewhere between 700 and 800k per hour. There are loads of other items that this does work for, but you kind of get the point. Oh, can you really believe this guy hasn't liked and subscribed yet? The Blast Furnace is great because you can make a lot of money there, and it's also a great smithing experience. The only hard requirement is starting the Giant Dwarf so you can get into Keldegrim to actually access the Blast Furnace. 60 smithing is nice because it saves 15k per hour, and if you do want to do this money making method, you are going to need to get a coal bag. You can get this coal bag at the Motherlode Mine by trading Percy for 100 golden nuggets. Strongly recommended but not required would be full graceful, this is going to greatly increase the amount of time that you were able to run without using your stamina potions which eats into profit. I also recommend you bring in ice gloves. This is going to allow you to be a little bit more reclined and also it is going to give you one more inventory space per each trip to the bank which is great and likely you cannot afford this since this is a guide for absolute beginners. Uh, but the Ring of Endurance is very nice here as well. In the very most basic sense, the Blast Furnace, you take ores out of the bank chest right here, and then you run over to the conveyor belt and deposit them into the Blast Furnace. Before you set up your runs, you're going to need to decide which bar you're planning on making. It's honestly pretty wild. You can make 600k an hour just doing iron at level 15, but as you do reach level 30 and level 50, your GP per hour does decrease from iron, but your experience does increase, so there is a bit of a trade off there. Before you start up, go to your menu entry swapper and you're going to want to go to UI swaps and then bank deposit this top one here. You're going to need to change this to eat, wield, etc. What this does is that when you're in your bank, you're able to shift click your coal bag and it will fill it automatically. All right, you got your gear set up here with your ice gloves and your graceful. You got your coal bag. There's one last thing you need to do and that's put some money in this coffer right next to the bank. You're going to need to deposit some coins in order to operate the blast furnace. I recommend just putting in a decent amount like two, 300k and you can always withdraw it later. So don't worry about putting too much in there. It's not gone forever. Sweet. So here's a full run. We're going to be doing steel for this one. So I want to fill up my coal bag. Then I want to withdraw all iron ore. Make sure that you do have your quantity set to all. So it's just one click. And then I like to position my camera so that I'm able to click the corner of the conveyor belt from the bank. So I don't have to deal with exiting the bank or anything like that. The less that we have to do, the more GP that we can make per hour. So right there, I clicked on that, that deposited all of my iron ore, and then I also want to deposit my coal. The blast furnace will make the ores, and then I run over here, click on this, space bar, and it will put all of my steel bars directly into my inventory, go back to the bank chest. I hope that was helpful. If you did have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Happy to answer them as they come across. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind with the blast furnace is that you want to minimize your running back and forth as much as possible. This doesn't matter for the lower level ores when it's one to one, but once you get to mithril, there are some formulas that make it a little bit more efficient. I'll drop a link to the wiki in order to see the pathing for that. Uh, in case you are interested in being slightly more efficient, it doesn't matter a ton in the long run, but it will increase your GP and XP per hour. I'm always hesitant to put wilderness money makers in these guides because you could just get killed and lose it all. But I do think revenants, you can kill them in such a low risk setup so early in your account build and the payoff so big that it was just worth putting in here. There's no hard requirements, but these are all very strongly recommended. You're definitely going to want a bracelet of Ethereum, 50 range as a minimum requirement for the magic shortbow. I recommend animal magnetism to use Ava's devices, and then you're going to need food and combat gear. The wiki recommends having 80 range, but this is definitely doable. With lower range, you're just going to get less than the 110 kills per hour that they're estimating. With those 110, you're looking at 2.2 mil per hour after subtracting supplies. If you are a lower level, you're going to kill less of these per hour, but you should still be able to get more than a mil per hour here. One thing I completely forgot to mention earlier is the Amulet of Avarice. You absolutely need one of these. It's so important for maximizing your GP per hour. It keeps you scold, which increases your chance of getting the rare loots. It notes the revenant drops so you can carry more of them, and it also gives you a 20% accuracy and damage boost. Really quick, let's go through the inventory. We are going to want a basic range setup with the magic short bow. We want some ranging potions, super resource for our prayer, and then you are going to want a stamina so you can run around and not worry too much about it. Full inventory of food, and then we're also going to want a looting bag. The revenants do drop, the looting bag is a one in three drop, so don't worry if you don't already have one. But then we also need a way to get there and a way to get back. If you've done the quest, you can get the royal seed pod. 
But if you're watching this video, you probably haven't done the quest, so a good runner-up would be the Ring of Wealth, since you can teleport past 30 Wilderness with this. What you're going to want to do is set up your custom left click on this though. Once again, we're returning to menu entry swapper. We're going to go into the settings, go to item swaps, and then we're going to put on customizable left click. Then we're going to go to our gear screen, go to your ring of wealth, hold down shift, right click this, and then you're going to swap left click to a teleport of your choice. I like the grand exchange. What this means is that I can just left click on my ring of wealth and it will automatically teleport me to the grand exchange so I don't have to worry about right clicking. Now to get there, I recommend the Revenant Cave teleport, but since we are sculled up, we are going to want to protect item at all times and then we are going to teleport up to the wilderness. And now you have to decide which Revenant you're going to kill. Oh, shit, look at that. This is really hard for me to tell you which one to kill because everybody's going to be at a different level. My best advice on this one is try a few out. If it's going a little bit too slow, try to go to a slightly weaker Revenant. There's really not too much to say about the fight itself. You're going to want to make sure that you are sipping your range potion and then just shoot them with your arrows until they're dead. Pick up their loot. Everyone's risk tolerance is a little bit different, but when you feel like you have enough loot to bank, go and do so. Teleport back up and keep on doing it. Getting set up on your dailies is going to be great for your account long term. Due to the infrequent nature of them though, I can't really assign them a GP per hour value. Also, these aren't actually dailies, I just didn't know what else to call them. First, let's talk about farming herbs. Farming herbs is a great way to make gold while slowly training your farming skill. Your GP per run is going to depend on which herbs you can farm and how many patches you have unlocked. First herb that you unlock for making money is going to be the Rainer Weeds at level 32 farming, and then at 38 you unlock Toadflex. Toadflex is really good because it's almost the same profit as Raynars, Torstals, Snapdragons, and everything like that, but the seeds are basically free. They're so cheap that if they die, it really doesn't matter. There are several things you can do to boost your chance of receiving more herbs, the first of which is unlocking more herb patches, so you can just grow more plants in general. You should always be using Ultra Compost. It makes your plants less likely to die, it increases the minimum amount of herbs that you can get, and it increases the chance of you getting more herbs as well. Obtaining the magic secatures, I I think that's how you say it, and having them in your inventory gives you a 10% boost to your yield on the herbs. You can unlock this by doing the fairy tale quest line. There are a bunch of achievement diaries that boost the yield of individual patches like Falador, Curran, and Kandarin. On average, herbs will mature every hour and 20 minutes. I don't recommend setting a timer or anything like that, like waiting here for them to grow but they're a good thing to do in between other activities like after a Slayer task. In a similar vein, you're able to construct birdhouses on Fossil Island. This provides you with bird's nests, seeds, and passive hunter experience. To make your birdhouses, you need a clockwork, a hammer, a chisel, and 10 seeds. Certain seeds work, but it is most of them now after a recent update. A massive quality of your life for your birdhouse runs is going to be the dig site pendant. I would not do them without this. You can unlock this by cleaning finds at the Varrock Museum. You're gonna want to unlock the second option on your dig site pendant, which is Fossil Island. You can do that by using your pendant on the strange machine. To get here, you're going to need to go to the rowboat at the museum camp, go around here through the hunter area, and then all the way up over here. It is a bit of a hike, but after your first time, you unlock the mush tree here, so you won't have to do it ever again. To do birdhouses, you do need to unlock the mush tree network so you can teleport to all the birdhouse locations. Once you have this unlocked, the first location is the Verdant Valley. Here you will find two different spots where you can build your birdhouses. The next two locations are in the mushroom meadow. First one is just north of the mush tree right here. Then to get to the next one, you just have to run south. where it is just above the swamp. Making your birdhouse is super simple. You just have to have your clockwork, your log, and your tools. Just use your tools on your log. It will make you the birdhouse, and then you can just click on the space to lay the birdhouse, click on your seeds, click on the birdhouse, and you're ready to go. One other thing I didn't mention earlier is you should be using a strung rabbit's foot. It gives you a slightly higher chance of getting bird's eggs during this activity. You can do these every 50 minutes and they take you about 50 seconds. The last one we're gonna talk about is the Kingdom of Miscellanea. It's free money. It's not as good as the other ones, but you do have to complete the Throne of Miscellanea quest and then the Royal Trouble quest to increase your yield, and you are gonna need some starting gold. The whole idea here is that you invest your gold into different resource allocations, and then your humble constituents work in order to gather your resources for you, updated once daily. The amount of resources that they do gather for you is based off of your favorability 
with your kingdom. Right now, <laughs> I'm pretty unfavorable. They don't like me very much, but I can raise this by doing certain activities and gathering resources on the island. I've always mined coals the fastest, but I want to check out teaks as well and see if those are competitive. I think I like teaks more. If you are only needing like one to five favor, coal's going to be better for you since it's right next to the place where you turn in the favor for your rewards. But if you're like me and let your kingdom go for months at a time, I think teaks are the best bet. Currently, the two most profitable resource allocations are herbs coming in first, and then it looks like hardwood with just mahogany will be second. With that being said, don't expect to get rich off this, but you pretty much have to do nothing and you make about 110K a day. I understand that this one's on the higher end of requirements for something that would be considered early game, but it's decent money, it's a lot of fun, and it's just a classic. Wiki currently has Barrows at 765k per hour. As with any PVM moneymaker, your ability to make money is going to be directly in proportion to how fast you can do the activity, so at lower levels, it should be a little bit less than this. As for a minimum setup, you can get started in something like this. Ibn's Blast is extremely strong, and due to the low defense of the Barrows Brothers, you can mage them in full melee gear and hit just fine. Magic is also very effective against the Ranger Carols, despite the armor's great magic defense. But for Aram's, due to Aram's magic level, I do recommend that you range him. Magic Shortbow with Rune Arrow should tear him apart, but I would not recommend going lower than that. Ranger Lockpicks will cut into your profit a little bit, but I think they're completely worth it. They have 50 charges and they're only 90k right now, You'll end up using one probably about every three to four hours of barrows or so. Uh, what this does is allow you to go through locked doors at barrows, which could save you several minutes each run. I know this is an early game guide, but if you have the stats and the ability to get Mauritania Hard Diary done, your GP per hour greatly increases. To get two barrows, I recommend buying barrows teleports. They're 3.5k right now but they're going to save you so much time that they are absolutely worth it. Then to teleport out of barrels, I do recommend a Ring of Dueling to teleport to Ferox Enclave. By doing this, you can restore your stats at the pool right here and then head right back to Barrows. To do the actual Barrows minigame, you need to kill all six of the Barrows brothers and then loot the chest at the end of the crypt. I like to personally start off with Darok. You're just going to use your spade to dig down in here, protect from melee, and then use your Ivan's Blast on him. Even in full rune armor, I hit just fine. After him, the order that you kill them in doesn't matter too much. I like to go in a little circle. You should end with Aram though, because Aram does have the ability to lower your stats, so you'd want that to happen after you killed all of the other brothers. One of the brothers won't be present at his chest, in which case you'll get this message about a hidden tunnel. After you've killed all of the five brothers upstairs, you're gonna have to go down into it. The main objective of this part down here in the catacombs is to get to the chest in the middle so you're gonna have to work your way around the circle until you find a door that is a little bit lighter than the other ones and has an open function on it in order to get into the middle. Realize that we can bypass that by using the strange old lockpick and go straight through the doors that are usually unable to be opened. Every time you open a door, it has a chance to spawn the sixth brother or a random enemy. You probably noticed this rewards potential widget on your screen. This does not impact getting Barrow's armors or weapons from the chest, but it does greatly influence the runes that you get. Runes do make up half of the GP that you make here, so it would be wise to cap your potential. You can do this by getting 86.8%, which can be achieved by killing a few extra enemies down here in the catacomb. When you get to the door leading to the inside, there will be a brief puzzle, which you have to answer to unlock the door. And if you have not encountered one of the brothers in the crypt before, when you click on the chest, it will spawn him, so make sure that you are ready. When you're done, just search the chest, get your loot. Maybe you're lucky, I'm not, but I do wish you the best of luck. These drops are 1 in 15, so get out there and get after it.